friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. So this week, we have a lot of things to do. Well, maybe not this week. I'm thinking next of next week. week. Yeah, next week we have a lot of things to do. Um, What happened to me this week? Let's see. This is the most time I feel like I've been home for I don't know how long. Yeah. Probably in the last January. Like, probably in the last like eight months. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> like, uh, which has been really nice. Mm -hmm. It's been very nice being home. Uh, that won't last for long though. <laughs> I'm sure. We are women on the move. On the move. That's why I said like jet setter. <laughs> Tears in my eyes. What was the what was the fucking joke, dude? You you brought it up in the car, guys. This is a bit that I will get to you eventually. <laughs> I will return it to you. I, I can't promise. Remember. <laughs> you literally were like, I'm going to write it down. I know. And then I thought, and then I said, wait, let's wait till we remember another one. Or maybe I said that in my head. <laughs> <laughs> write it Guess down. what? She didn't write we it down. didn't write it down, guys. I will say so many of you have tagged us in watching Chang and Dunk. You're they, welcome. They should be paying us marketing fees. That's, what, that's I'm what I'm saying. saying. That's uh, listen. Tell them and islands to get in line <laughs> and pay me. Who was I talking to about islands recently? Oh, it was Sandra and Jordan. That's I, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We were talking about islands and uh, like our friends were telling us that every time they drive past when they think of us, <laughs> <laughs> which if that's the legacy I leave behind, so be it. So be it. That's all right. I went out on top, uh, but I will say, that islands at this point owes me money and okay. i feel like it's time we talk about it or a lifetime supply of big waves i'm okay with that too what's wrong with that there's something either or that. works for me but uh that's how i feel about chang <laughs> <laughs> so many people were like i'm watching this because drew and Jason said to and i mm -hmm. i just want to put an asterisk before everything we recommend <laughs> <laughs> we love it whether or not you will it's none of my business it's just, it's out of my, my wheelhouse at that point. Like go with God. Right? Yeah. Um, but same thing with islands because no, that one's good. It is good, but like, it's but you also go for the vibes. And we also, my mom had true. such a great point every time in our life, yeah. or our lives, me and Drew, every time we've had really big, exciting news yeah. or, like a or really, something cool a that happens, good grade or something like we, my mom literally told us she was pregnant with Donovan at islands. So like, Every time that we is had true, something yeah. really true, we got into college, like whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, that is true. So it's like 70% nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> vibes. I'm under no 10% vibes. I'm under no illusion that it's the best food you've ever had. What However, did Phil think of it? Because he's a real I genuinely don't know. I haven't asked them. I but I feel like they would lie to me because I think so too. Like we took our agent and our manager there because <laughs> before our we went on tour. <laughs> our agent Alex is Canadian. is Canadian so she's like can we please Phil go to islands on the east coast so yeah, they don't have islands yeah Phil's a, an east coast girl so they were like well he didn't say that but <laughs> Alex was like can you take me to islands and we were like yeah but set that bar low yeah we go for the vibes yeah and they have the world's biggest booth but they only have two of them and it sits at least ten people but usually just the six of us <laughs> <laughs> but when we went with Alex and Phil we all fit yeah that's a lot of people and we all fit. It was so fun. there you go. But um, anywho, what else is new with you? I watched X this week. I'd never seen it. I'm excited. To watch oh, Pearl. that's right. I'll watch that one next. I really yeah. liked it. Out of 10, I'd give it I'd give it an eight. I really liked it. Nice. More than I thought for sure. I watched, I finished House of Dragon finally. Ooh, I need to get on that. Ooh, I've been watching Yellow Jackets. It is so scary this season. I know. I, Succession's I've heard. On. Oh, yeah. I don't watch either of those shows, but all peace, all love. What else did I finish? Oh, The Voice. The Voice. <laughs> Listen, you guys spoke and we listened. I'm we are watching watch, The Voice. When they do the live shows, I'll start watching it again. No, watch the battles. They're so good. <sighs> okay, but I want to skip all the auditions. We watched all of them already. I didn't. There I was only one more after. No, I looked. We had three more because we watched three episodes. There's six days of auditions. That's not true. I swear in my life. <laughs> I swear in my life. That's not true. Okay. It's not six. There is. And I laughed because I said, there's no way, dude. You gotta watch the blinds. <laughs> like you don't, you don't know who's who. And see, and I don't care. I'll just start. Okay. It doesn't. I will I'll start the battles. I'll listen, start the battles. Listen. Oh, that's a great idea. Start Wait, the battles. So are they doing knockout rounds now or just yeah. battles? Okay. No. So they're doing. Okay. 
So for those of you that don't oh, watch yeah, okay. the boys, first they do blinds. First they do the blind auditions, which their backs are turned and they turn if they want them. And then they Drew get to said choose. if we were in it, first of all, I saw in a foreign country because you know they do the voice everywhere. Yeah. And yes, we've seen that Joe Jonas was a coach. I know in so many of you Please once again, stop us. once again, correcting me. Uh, listen, do I do I look or sound like I live in Australia? No. No. Um, how the fuck would I know <laughs> that he was on the Voice Australia? I wouldn't. Why would I care? He's not in this. And one. I would. I don't care. Exactly. But I did see a, a like a version of it in like Norway or wherever. Yeah. And it's like a duo, and they they have two chairs that are attached to each other, and they have to agree oh. to turn around. But I was like, that should be me. <laughs> What a great idea. Wait, there should be two chairs and then one little chair and the little one's for a squid. There you go. And it's if funny he doesn't choke on his spit, we're not turning. It's funny because I sing songs to squid all the time. Mm-hmm. And then I told Billy that I'm like, do you think <laughs> do you think I would get a chair to turn? <laughs> like singing a, a song that I sing to squid. And then Billy goes, yeah, I think you get all four, but they'd all be squid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, so they do the blinds. Um, if more than one coach turns and they get to pick, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Then they go to what they call the battles once their teams are full. Mm-hmm. So they have 10 on each team. So there's 40 people. Yeah. So they pair them up based on their off, own teams. Yeah. On their own teams, they pair them up and then they pick a winner. And so there's an opportunity for each coach to steal one person from a different team, from a different team. And if two people want to steal, they get to choose again. And then um, they also this season have what they call a playoff pass, which is like they basically keep both people on their team, oh, but they wow. send one to the to the lives and then they they skip knockouts, right? Wait, start over. So they have let's say they have two people. It's like the golden buzzer. That's my understanding from essential yeah. essentially, yeah. But like they have two people, they both did really great. Yeah. So they say they pick one winner of the battle who then goes. And then the, the last, yeah. Okay. And then the last person, if they hit playoff pass, they get to skip the knockouts and they just go straight to the live. So wouldn't you pick the one, like, let's just say they were both, one was nine out of 10, one was 10 out of 10. Yeah. You would say, well, say the nine out of 10 one won and then send the 10 out of 10 all the way to the playoffs, right? I think they're playing it the opposite. Like I, this is my theory of how they're strategizing. Okay. I think they leave the better one in the round where they can do knockouts because they'll win. Oh, oh because and knockouts they, are when they go against each other's they teams. They go against each other. You're right. No, you're no, right. no, no. They go against each other again. Oh, like okay. Like their own team, but they pick a different person. Oh, okay. So like, let's, they have like- But then they steal people so people move different teams. Essentially, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So there's always new people on all the teams. Yeah, some, yeah, essentially, yeah. They each get one new person by the end. But like, I think they leave the better person on their, in the knockouts mm-hmm. because they're more likely to win. And then they send the other person that was good, not as good, straight to the lives. So they still have really great people, but they sent the one that probably wouldn't survive the knockouts. That doesn't make sense. any, literally I think any it does sense. because they're still really good. Like they're still well, quality. And I guess the goal is, is to, to win. Well, and to bring as many people from exactly. your team all the way to the end. Yeah. So the goal, the goal is to, they'll each buy the lives. They, they will each have enough people. Like they all have the same amount of people mm-hmm. when they get to the lives. Mm-hmm. So, which is the playoffs. So. Oh, they will? Yeah, they each they don't battle each other. They battle their own teams again. Oh, but for lives they each have four. No, see, so they have they have ten. Yeah. Which means they have five battles each. Uh-huh. One person wins out of those five. I did the math in my head. So, so like that's five. So five people move to knockouts. Yeah, five people move to the knockouts. So get, and and then, one goes to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So te- essentially they only have four. Okay. Four cup, four people total. They pair those two up again mm-hmm. and then they each pick one more. They each stole. And then so they each go to the lives with like four people or something like that. Okay. So almost like I just said they go to lives with four. I don't remember that. After all of that. I, I did say that. That's okay. Sorry. So wait, math are, whiz. Are they still on battles right now? Are they on knockouts? No, they're in battles. Okay. And uh, they're so good. Like this season's crazy. Pr- pretty nuts. Yeah. Like if I were to pick good. the team that I think is the best, mm-hmm. I'm always going to pick uh, Team Kelly. That's because you like Kelly the best. No, I like Niall the best. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I will say? Niall's eating it up. Really? Like in the battles, like the song choices he's making, he's he's doing a really great job. Kelly's like he's, always my favorite. She is my no, favorite. she's wonderful. But Chance, like is his team. Crazy his team's team? crazy. Like he has people that I'm like, I don't remember them being that good. But that's what they talk about, like the coaching and the song yeah, choice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So and Blake does really good too. He, like, yeah, he's always solid. But I always Niall think- had one two girls yeah 
ate There's it up. There's a Taylor Swift song, right? No, that was on Blake's team. <gasps> There's another? Yeah, but there, no, it's two. It's, it's like that little um, mousy girl. And then um, there's I'm, another girl. Her name's Kala. And I remember because that reminds me of Tarzan. Well, I remember because she said people couldn't pronounce her name. Kala. Yeah. I'm like, this is two syllables. She's really pretty. I remember her. <laughs> yeah, her her and the um, the little mousy girl. What song do they do? Um... It's a song I know. I just can't remember what it is. Look it up. It's okay. We don't need to look it up. No, just look up the song. I'm telling you. <laughs> but they, the Blake's team, that's the one that went viral on TikTok. I don't want to look because I don't want it to be spoiled for me. Oh, you want to be... Well, no, you're not going to see who wins. How? Because you just look up, like, Battle. <laughs> battle Royale. <laughs> oh, look it up on YouTube. Like, then, then then it won't spoil anything for you. So just type Call of the Voice? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, she did that Joni Mitchell song. Oh, they did Skinny Love. You can't remember the name of the show. They did Skinny Skinny Love, but the birdie version. And it was crazy. Like, oh, but but Chance had one that I was like, they sang Gravity Mm -hmm. by By John John Mayer. Bro, the guy that he put on in that duo, first of all, they were both extremely talented. But the guy, when he auditioned, he was the only one who churned because he picked a hard song and I think it, he was nervous or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you have potential. I can I can smell it. And then when he had him do that, he did an arrangement and shit and then he had him play the guitar. Dude, he was, I'm like, he could win. Anyways, <laughs> I am I think this season, I'm like leaning towards Team Chance because they're, so? they're really good. Yeah, he has a lot. But Niall's team's pretty good too, so. Yeah, I feel like this year they picked better people. I feel like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I felt like when we want, I I love Ariana Grande so much. Me too. Like, it's like too much how Same. much I love. Like, I would do anything she told me to, <laughs> but I did not like her team on The Voice. They were, some of them were really good. Name some one. of them were, Sasha was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sasha and his was, dad. Yeah. yeah. No, Sasha was good. Not him. I don't think of him because he made it almost all the way to the end. Yeah, that's true. He's really funny. But I know I love Sasha. Not um, him. No, I just feel like, I feel like that was her first round, her first go of it. Maybe that's why. But I don't know, man. Niall, Niall killed it. Like he made some quality choices, yeah. and and the way he paired them was really good. So mm-hmm. like he's just doing. I mean, maybe I'm giving them too much credit. If you're on, if you work on the voice, let me know. Like, are they the ones who actually do that? Let me know. Like coaching them? Yeah, well, not just coaching them, but like pairing them, doing their arrangements and stuff. I know I can tell that Chance does it, but you know how like I'm like I don't know. Do you guys source that like? Do you have somebody else like pair maybe them they up? have a team that they're that they I'm work sure. With. I'm sure. Maybe I'm being I don't know. I'm Too like cynical. I'm like, if you don't know, if you do know, don't tell me. I want to live in the illusion that they do it themselves. Yeah. I think they ha- <laughs> I would think they'd have they're to. They're just so busy. That's why I'm like, do you guys source that help? Anyways. Well, especially Kelly Clarkson. She's hosting. No their, shit. Their That's why yeah. I, um but anyways, I, my one critique for the voice this season. Too many antics. Too many bits. Take them down. Too much banter, too much sillies. Show me the voice. Like, I want to watch the... You know what's funny is, like, they intersplice these, like, skits and shit, which, like, I get it. It's daytime television. But at the same time, I'm like, I want to watch you coach. Like, yeah. show me coaching. Like, I love when I want to like, see them getting mad and they tell them to get out. I want to see that. <laughs> I want to see you go, like, that was pitchy. That was flat. Like, take it up three notches. Whatever the fuck. Like, I want to watch that shit. Mm. But even in the battles, like... I know that that's not the practice they have, like the one that they film. Yeah. I know that, but like, I always think like, no, I like when they would show them me. getting ready for the knockouts and they none of them have makeup on and they're all like in like pajamas. Like, yeah. Like you see clips of that in the battles now, like they like practice in a hotel and shit. Like yeah. they rent out a room and that's where they primarily practice. But anyways, <laughs> that's my one critique. Uh, dial it back with the bits. Right now, let's just say there's 10. Let's turn it down to like five. Yeah, let's go half that speed and then put more in voice. There. More voice. <laughs> Less the. Not enough voice. An antic I did like was Jimmy Fallon. That was hilarious. That was funny. I don't count that. I count the parts <laughs> when they're like, who made a mess in here? Yeah. Blake, that's so mean. Do y'all need help finding the stage? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is another thing. I was like, when we were first watching it, um, the way that we were like, guys, should I watch the voice? Should I watch the voice? Okay, fine, I'll watch the voice. As <laughs> talking if, to no one, yeah, as if like I needed you to convince me. I've already made up my mind. But anyways, when we were first watching, we were watching with my family, <laughs> and I was like, this is what I kept saying every time Blake was on the screen. I kept going, when I die, I wanna come back, a country boy. And then Dason literally goes, why do you keep saying that? Like she's like annoyed with me. <laughs> because 
<laughs> and then I go. She would, she would just say it, and then I'd look at her, and then she'd be like, <laughs> just watching the TV. And then she no goes, contact. She goes like, "Are you just saying things?" And I'm like, "No, dude." He, I said, "No, you know the song that he has." And she goes, "What song?" And I go, "He has a song." Like where he sings God, that exact I, I line. I hope we don't get copyrighted on it too. Yeah, I know I sound just like him, so most likely we will. One more time, do it one more time. He goes like this. When I die, I want to come back a country boy. See? You're telling me that he wouldn't turn for me on the voice? Come on. That end part is too rushed. There's no way it sounds like that. Do, did you listen to the clip I sang No, you? I didn't. Of I, course you didn't. <laughs> uh, of course you didn't. I literally That's was going like, in the dump. I already she, screenshot she, it. <laughs> She literally sent me like she she goes, well, no, no, no. When we were talking about it in person, she goes, what song is that? And then I go, it's literally called When I Die, I Want to Come Back. I got you. <laughs> like something like what that. What does that even mean? And then she goes, no, he doesn't. You're making that up. And I go, where the fuck would I get that? Like my brain is not nearly creative enough to make that up. And then she didn't believe me. And then fast forward like a few days later, she was like, like out. four days later. Yeah. We haven't talked about it for four whole days. Yeah. I just, I looked it up cause I was watching the voice and I was like, do you remember that? And Billy goes, no. And I go, what the fuck? Like, and so then I went and I looked it up and I found the YouTube video and I literally texted it to her. And that's all I sent. I know. And then, I, <laughs> just and then that. I said, I'm going to block you. Yeah. She texted me back. I'm going to block you. And then I sent her a voice note of me singing. Oh, that I didn't hear. We could play that. Let me yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, Jesus. I sent her that voice note. And, and, and then she put, I sound just like him. It's honestly crazy. And then I did. And then she did never respond. She just never texts me back. <laughs> and I'm like, like out to dinner with Josh and Mayo and I get that I'm all <laughs> girl. <laughs> shut up. Annoying. Everyone go look it up. The song literally starts with that. Watch play it and we'll just bleep it. Okay. Hold on. The first like I made Billy laugh so hard because he heard me listen, record the voice note and then I played it for him. Hold on, there's ads. <laughs> we'll cut back in. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. Jesus Christ. I sound just like it. My timing's a little off, oh, but. When I die, yeah. I want to come back as a country boy. <laughs> Dude, come on. I You're did, telling me there's not a future for me. A I've country never music. liked country music. Taylor Swift always. Oh, wait, Casey Musty. And then what's another country artist you like? Is that it? I mean, there's a couple songs that I fuck with. Yeah. I'll throw Kelsey Ballerini in there. I like her. Oh, yeah. I think it's Cassidy, Cassidy Pope. Pope. I yeah. think she's country. She's I like Mary Morris. The voice. I, like I Morris. love Mary Morris. Okay. That's it. Yeah. No country men. That's why. <laughs> there's one song called uh, Lights Down Low. I think his name's like Josh Turner or something. I don't think that's the name of the song, but I, I I'm know. telling you. I'm going to look it up right now because I know. Isn't that isn't it that song where he's singing really deep? Yeah, he's all baby lock the doors and turn the lights down low. That one, that one bangs. I know the song, but I don't. That one it's goes called hard. your man. Oh, that's what as soon as you said lights oh. down low, I was like, I think everyone, everyone in that's the what comments, you call it. <laughs> Whatever. But anyways, I don't like any country boys. I guess that's it. Yeah, for huh? me. Yeah, I feel like there are some. Some country artists that have been very vocal about being like progressive in their beliefs. And yeah, like, like um, what's the the judge on American Idol? Luke Bryan. Yeah, yeah. Everybody loves him, and he's very vocal about it. There are some other ones too. Like I think like I almost said someone that is not a country <laughs> artist. Let's hear it. <laughs> Do you remember that guy from America? I think he was on American Orville Idol. Peck. I love Orville Peck. Orville Peck and yeah. Trixie Mattel. Oh yeah, duh. Gotta say Trixie. Um, I was gonna say Gavin DeGraw, but that's <laughs> that is a that is an art. Is it kind of sounds country? He sings the One Tree Hill uh, <laughs> the song. song no. I don't want to make yeah. anything. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. He that's does not, sing another song though that you're yeah. thinking of. Yeah, that's like a pop song. Yeah, he's you know kind of country. I guess everyone's gonna be like, no, he's not. Um, I, no, there was, I don't care. There's. <laughs> Hey, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, there was another one. I forget. He's like a really popular country artist, but he's been like very, very vocal about like LGBTQ plus rights and like um, abortion, rights. abortion rights and all that kind of stuff. So um, I forget who it is. I'm sure you guys will comment below. 
but there's not many of them that are like that, that are like willing to risk their fucking fan base to be, yeah. um, like firm in their beliefs. But so, the ones that are, I'm like, I fuck with you. Maybe I'll listen to country. Who knows? But we do love Casey Musgraves. Oh, Oh, I love her. I told my mom, well, that, that album will always remind me of Jerby every time. I yeah. To it's like, Hour. oh, so great. I love that album. I played that album way too much. And then I go through hyper fixations where I start listening to it again and I can't yeah, stop. Yeah, me too. Well, <laughs> it's just how it is. Anyways, big fan of The Voice this season. Yeah. Keep it up. Keep up the great work. I uh, I will continue to tune in on the cock. <laughs> That's what we call the Peacock app. Yeah. We got it from Jason Bateman on Smartless. There's an episode where he called it the cock, and I've always called it since that since then because it's funny. <laughs> I love he Peacock. He said it in too. passing, and then we'll learn it. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Because that's what I call the Peacock app, the cock. <laughs> Don't just skip past it like you didn't just say that. Just say it as if it's like a common thing. Yeah, they're like, oh, everyone calls it that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing, I know we told you we were going to do a new one. We couldn't think of a new one, so we're doing part three. We just got busy watching busy, the voice. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> busy, I say that after I just said this is the most time I've ever been at home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> busy. Listen, we're only human. It's I'm like, only I'm only human. human after all. No, that's a song. I don't even care about that song. I just like it on the meme. Yeah. The yeah. spinning guy. It's so <laughs> funny every single time. Yeah. Hey, y'all. We're going to take a quick break from our episode to hear from our sponsors, ZocDoc. So you've been stewing about a health problem you have. You're thinking about it too much, right? You almost resort to texting your group chat to get your friends' opinions on it who are not doctors. We all know that. And you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat However, you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. Plus, you can do it all from the comfort of your home, of your phone, however you want to do it. You don't have to worry about having to call the doctor like when your mom makes you call for themselves. You can... Find what you're looking for on ZocDoc, which is really great because I feel like it has the opportunity. It gives you the opportunity for you to be able to look at reviews and find what works best for you, what feels best for you. And then you can find quality medical care from the comfort of your home and your phone. So for those of you who are interested in trying ZocDoc, you can go to ZocDoc.com slash two idiot girls and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's zocdoc.com slash two idiot girls, zocdoc.com slash two idiot girls. Now back to the episode. Yeah. So we're doing a part three of fangirl things. Sorry. Um, sorry. I know. Not. Not. Just kidding. I thought we were talking for 40 minutes. Right now it's only been 26. We have plenty of time, you guys, <laughs> to get it in. Usually your Zoomies take a lot longer. That's why I thought it was. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, though, about Chang Can Dunk. What'd you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> so many of you are saying that you watched it, but I haven't seen any reviews. Reviews. Hello. Um, That's just added to the list of things we're doing marketing for. I know. With no compensation. Chang can dunk. Someone thought I was saying chank and dunk. Like they're two friends. Oh. <laughs> two friends. One's named Chank and one's <laughs> Dunk. Can you imagine? Okay, so we're doing a part three of cringy things you guys did at fa as fangirls. I'm not even joking. There's 473 entries, so we had enough to make a part yeah, three. Yeah, definitely. And you guys like these episodes, too. Yeah. You guys feel it. I think you guys feel seen and validated. Yeah, I feel that. And I can relate. So <laughs> Literally me. Literally me when I'm... So this one's from Miana. She said, from the ages of five to ten, I was super obsessed with Michael Jackson. So obsessed that when we had a school talent show, I dressed up as Michael Jackson from the music video Bad. And I danced to the song from the choreography from the Michael Jackson The Experience video game. Mind you, I never rehearsed or practiced it. I just went up there raw <laughs> and bombed so hard. When they were telling us who won, I got third place and started crying from joy. My mom swiftly told me I looked stupid up there and that I was crying over getting third place in an elementary school talent show and to pull myself together. I later found out the only reason I placed was because my grandma worked at the school and they didn't want to upset her. Either way, I placed and people called me MJ from then on. Uh, and I think they were teasing me, but now I still go by MJ because it's my first and middle initials. 
Well, that's cute. Damn, your mom. <laughs> your mom being like, don't get too excited. It's third place. <laughs> it was your, it's nothing to be proud of. Did your mom got a problem with you or something? <laughs> that's pretty funny. I feel like I did play that game. We had that game on the Wii. I, if it's the one on the Wii, I think I know. Is Bad the one where he dances in the white suit? I think there's a Michael. Isn't there a Michael Jackson dance on one of the Just Dances? Yeah, I'm sure there are. But there was one where it was just his songs. No, I know. I just yeah. don't remember playing that one at all. Oh, I do. We okay. had it for sure. And we played it like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like Just Dance was like my shit. Dude. Yeah, I, I loved, loved that game. Or even Dance Central. With Dance the Central was really fun. One time I stayed up till three in the morning learning the drop it like it's hot one. <laughs> And she still does it to the same. And it, the dance moves look exactly like that meme when that lady's like, one, two, three, four. Remember that? She said, it's all about hood. It's all about swag. Like that white lady. That's literally what the moves look like. So they could never translate to real life. Yeah. But I thought I was eating it up. I really did. <laughs> I think that, uh, what else did she say happened? Damn, you're a Nepo baby. That's why you place at the talent show. It, I would have said that to you if I was against you and I knew you sucked and I lost Speaking to you. Speaking of Michael Jackson, Drew performed in a talent show in the fifth grade. You were there too, no, bitch. I, I know. Let me finish my story. <laughs> I was going to say. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> to a Michael Jackson song and they did Thriller. We did Thriller. I don't like to remember that. It was really embarrassing. We were like, why are we doing this? It was so humiliating like that's one of those things that i i wish that i could like rip memories out of my brain (laughs) like so i didn't have to remember because i was in fifth grade yeah i'm in six which means i don't go to her school but (laughs) But she was was participating as a backup dancer against my own will yeah and uh i was performing it with my friend at the time yeah and i remember like I don't know what made us want to do it. Like we were like, oh, let's let's enter the talent show. What are we going to do? Oh, my God. Thriller. Yeah. And I don't know why, because transparently I did not care for Michael Jackson as a child. Listen to him. Yeah. Like I like he didn't speak to my spirit as a child. Plus, at that point, that was right before or if not during my like uh, my chemical romance phase. No, it was right before because in sixth grade. Yeah. So, um. Like, I never listened to Michael Jackson. Like, I didn't ask to listen. Um, So I don't know why. You know why we picked that song? And this is probably part of the reason why I'm humiliated. (laughs) Is because 13 Going on 30 came out around that time. It's it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah. Huge box office success. Yeah. We got it on DVD. I watched it religiously. I was just such a fucking fan. Yeah. I was also someone who wished that I was 30 when I was that old. (laughs) Like, so I felt seen and validated. Yeah. And then I remember in the movie, if you remember, she, she grows up. A thriller, yeah, yeah, she grows up in the 80s. She fast forwards and then she does this whole scene where she dances with her childhood best friend and they dance to Thriller. That is the only reason I picked that song is because Jennifer Garner did it. So I thought for sure I was qualified enough to do it myself. And that's how we learned the dances from the few clips. I didn't even them. I didn't even watch the music video. I watched Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo do it. And figured that was more than enough. Like, I didn't need any other instruction. I'm like, they've clearly got it handled. So that's good. Me thinking that they choreographed that to some extent. Mm. And so we would literally rewind that scene, that exact scene, like 50 fucking times. Like, we just kept rewinding it instead of just looking up his music video. Yeah. Or even a tutorial on YouTube. A tutorial. I don't even think YouTube was out at the time. Yeah, it was. Maybe it was. I don't know. But like, it's just like that was our thought was like oh we'll just watch the movie like that's why i'm kind of glad stuff like the hoedown throne on came out after even though we ended up doing it at a talent show <laughs> that really? was a different talent but show saying, like i would rather have done that and then you know what's so funny? what i have is my thing you know i don't know but i remember right before we went up there were these girls that danced before us and they did a hip-hop routine to goodies by sierra <laughs> And I remembered watching them and being like, I wish we were doing something like that. Like thinking that we were like, why would they put us on after that? Yeah. And we like walked on the stage. Like, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Like too. zombies. <laughs> when I tell you like, okay, first of all, the, the attire that we picked, we picked really big black t-shirts and we just like literally cut them and tore them yeah. like on the sleeves and on the bottom. 
And then we used red paint and tried, what did we write on? I think we wrote thriller on the shirts. Probably. Like not well. And then we put glitter on there and we did them like the night before. So they weren't even dry, <laughs> but we folded them up and took them to school. So like when you unwrap them, it's like it, there's paint crust. Of cr- crust everywhere. Paint. You can't even read the, it's not legible by any means. And then we were, I remember we were in the classroom, like Like doing our makeup. The lights are off and we're getting ready. And I felt like I was, I swear to God, I felt like I was going on a world tour. Like I was opening at Madison Square Garden. performing. (laughs) For them, they're waiting for a performance. You're opening your Vegas residence. Yeah. And I'm like, and we're going to give it to them. And we did our makeup. Like I, we literally looked like the little kid from Coco. Like we just like. (laughs) We put like, it's like the Dia de los Muertes, but not really. We were trying to look like zombies. Like little skeletons, yeah. Skeleton, again, but like we just did a white base. Yeah. And then we just drew big black circles around our eyes and our mouth uh-huh. and no nose. No. So we kind of looked like pandas. We didn't even look <laughs> like <laughs> skeletons. It was really bad. And then we ratted our own hair. So we just looked like jungle kids. Like we didn't even. No, I know. Just, it didn't make any sense. And we did all that <laughs> like sewer rats. It was so bad. <laughs> and then we go up there and I remember like thinking like, this is the biggest audience I've ever performed to. I'd never performed before that to anything. Not like dancing. Yeah. We've done like, yeah. Like, uh, music recitals and stuff. <laughs> Wait, but then it gets worse. So we, we do that. You don't win. I remember that. Yeah. We didn't even play. Yeah. I think goodies, the girls that did goodies, they went. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I'm in, so that's when I'm in sixth grade. When I'm in 10th grade, I'm in ASB. And we did an assembly and the theme was like, cause it was the fall assembly. So we did like, Oh wait, one more thing oh, about sorry. our performance. Okay. I forgot. Um, you're probably thinking like, Oh, like talent show, like thriller. It's probably Halloween. It wasn't, it was May. So it's like end of the year. Like, like, <laughs> summer. Like, yeah, like it makes no sense. Like we did a Halloween themed uh-huh. and then, um, it was fucking hot. Uh-huh. I remember that. So as I'm dancing, I'm <laughs> sweating all the makeup off like okay. it's literally like dripping it's getting in my eyes yeah and then um you could barely hear the music again yeah. and so all you hear is us like slamming our feet on the state <laughs> you know the audio on tiktok yeah they do the <laughs> girl i'm more embarrassed about that than i am about hold on throw down that's ho- wrong hold on throw down bare feet on a stage at least i was just in front of my sh- my family uh, not just family drew they're like <laughs> 50 fucking fobs in there and they're all in their 60s you know why the talent show for hoedown throwdown makes me want to like gouge my own eyes out sure but that's how much i hate the thriller one like they're both really really awful I but i think- just hate that one a little more i think because we didn't know the dance the hoedown throwdown like but so thr- for thriller we did prep and learn a little bit of it but that's my point. It's a, it's, it's almost three minute song and we Not didn't even that song's long. And it's funny because it has a really long intro yeah. and we didn't know that. So when it played, we started dancing, but like <laughs> there was no music. So we had to wait till the little skit was over and then we like, started. Oh, and yeah. then like the yeah. beginning didn't know that. That's why I hate that one more mm. because hold on, don't say what you want. But I knew that choreography inside and out. Sure, sure, sure. I knew that shit. I could do that with my eyes closed. Okay. So that's why I think I, I hate the other one more because we just, we didn't even know the dance humiliation, doing it aside. I just think when you're little, when you're little like that, like who cares? I didn't care no, at no, the just time. Like, just, just like me on my on didn't care. I also didn't care. So I think I would rather, <laughs> think of when i didn't care than when i'm in high school and i do and i go why am i doing this i'm so embarrassed i didn't care when we did hold on throw down either transparently i was what 14 at the time 15 yeah and i still didn't care because i was like i'm eating this up like i don't care what you bitches say like (laughs) okay well then i'm in 10th grade asb we just (laughs) had to plan a surprise dance for everyone even though everyone hated asb like no one cared about us yeah and we did thriller and i thought it was so cool I remember and that. And then I think when I was getting ready to graduate, I told Drew, was that like super cringy? And she was like, yeah. And we laughed. I had my fair share of cringy dances in high school too. Like oh, performances. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty bad. It me was and, really me bad. Me and a bunch of fucking white kids doing Thriller. <laughs> it's bad. Okay, this next one is actually from someone we know. Who? Our cousin Leah. Oh, period. Um, and she said, the first part isn't really embarrassing, but it adds to the lore. 
Gotcha. So she said, okay, I remember one day when our families had a get together, you guys let me have a pair of Hannah Montana pajama pants. I think I forgot a pair. Like we probably went swimming and she needed pants. Were they purple? I think so. I don't know. I know. And she said, and nine-year-old me literally savored them because I was such a huge Hannah Montana fan that I literally still have them to this day and I still wear them. Leah, are they purple? I have to ask her. <laughs> and then she said, also regarding Hannah Montana, I used to be so obsessed that I downloaded Netflix or something on my Nintendo 3DS so I could literally watch it on that tiny little screen. And I remember my parents looking at my screen time and I had collected over 600 hours alone <laughs> just on Netflix and I was so embarrassed. Leah, you're a real one for that. <laughs> I know the pants. I think they're purple. Like a fuzzy. lavender, right? Yeah, they're yeah. like a lavender. But her mom had messaged me and said that she still wears them and she thinks it's so funny that she still wears them. <laughs> Period, bitch. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's so funny. I know. I, I really did enjoy Hannah Montana. I wouldn't say I was obsessed with it, but I really did enjoy it. I just loved that era. It was so fun. Yeah, like the the all the shows at that time. Yeah. And like like the the kid, like atmosphere on disney channel at the time i yeah. feel like was super like lit but i i wouldn't say i was obsessed i don't know if i was ever really obsessed with a tv show i was obsessed with high school musical yeah like that one i was obsessed with outside of just watching it like i had a pillow that was like a squishy one but it was a high school musical like it had the cover art on it and then um of the second one right no the first, first one, one? Okay. and then when you like pressed it in the corner it would play a we're all in this together. Like it would play oh, like a yeah, clip of I it. That. <laughs> and it was like a squishy pillow, mm-hmm. but had a speaker in it that would play <laughs> that fucking song. I think I had, um, I actually had a musical toothbrush that had a Hannah Montana song on it. Me too. I bought them. You know, when you like tooth tunes. Yes. Do y'all remember when you got like a little too old? Like it, that's all subjective, but it's like a little too old to like stuff that's like meant for children. Mm-hmm. So you're like 15 ish, like in but that there's range. full grown adults in it. So it's, I'm allowed to like it. Well, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. But that's what you figure out later on in life. But I mean, like, you remember when you thought, I think this is like pick me shit, but mm-hmm. like you thought it was quirky to, to wear little kid stuff or to like have it like yeah. a backpack that was like Ninja Turtles, even though you yeah. don't like the Ninja Turtles. Do you remember yeah. that? Cringe. I know. I think my senior year, I had a Nihal Kailan backpack, but I did like that show. Yeah. To watch with Donnie. I mean, not enough to buy the backpack. I mean, too old to have the backpack. 18 yeah, like, with the backpack, too old. Just a hair. The Ninja Turtle one, that's a good example. But the shell. Yes, the shell. Yeah. It's just like. It's a great example. It's like liking that shit for the sake of of like being able to say that you like it like to get to garner a reaction not because you actually like it if that makes sense but i want to say that's like pick me shit no it is it's like to differentiate yourself from other girls It is because i was going to say another part of the story of the uh michael jackson the when we performed at your fifth grade promo not promotion can you imagine (laughs) your talent show yeah was that i you were obviously we were sweaty because it was hot but I didn't want to wipe, wipe off my makeup because I wanted to walk around like that so people would look at me. <laughs> and I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud to admit But it, it is a fact. And I remember Drew going, why didn't you wash your face? <laughs> <laughs> I get it, though. Like, yeah. I, you know. It's a bit. It's a bit. And it, like wanting attention, it's a bit. I know. Like, that's the same thing. Nothing's I could- worse than wanting attention so you do stuff like that and then no one gives you attention. <laughs> Or if you get one, it's like worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you get one nod or one acknowledgement. Yeah. It's like the whole thing was sure, worth it. Sure, yeah. Um, I think that's another reason why the Hannah Montana thing was so well, speaking of Hannah Montana, mm-hmm. um, we uh we've already told this story, but we did the hold down throw down at a family reunion talent show. And if you're someone or any sort of Polynesian, you know that our people are so like wildly talented it's and they always have a talent show like always but i I know they do it because they like to compete against each just like they'll have a volleyball tournament that's they'll have that or dodgeball yeah or kick we did kickball kickball is a big one yeah they did a uh talent show and every year people dance they perform songs and when they do that i mean like like culturally significant like they do like someone singing and dancing Mm -hmm. or some sort of polynesian dancing uh not us no, no, no. We thought, let's get up there and show these <laughs> gonna, people some real I'm gonna talent. Really, I'm going to real shake the table at this reunion. And I'm going to do something that no one's expecting, even though no one gave a shit about us. Or Hannah Montana. That too. What's funny about that too is like, 
that's in a perfect example. It's like it parallels the Ninja Turtle thing because did I have to do that? No. And we did it barefoot. So all you could hear was the squeaking of our feet. Not even the slamming of our feet. <laughs> Because there's a lot of stomping in that choreography. Pop it, lock like, it. Yeah. yeah. And it's then very like, do, do, do. you yeah. know what I mean? Like once you threw the first verse, I was like, why are we doing this? Not me. But the most embarrassing part is the fact that the music is always so low that you all you hear <laughs> is your feet slapping. That's humbling. <laughs> that changes you a little bit. Your brain chemistry shifts. The after trajectory that. of your life, it, it moves. Yeah. Yeah. In the moment, I feel like I was like, I thought to myself, I'm killing it. Mm -hmm. And then um, immediately when it finishes, no clapping. That tells me otherwise. <laughs> that gives me a harsh truth that I don't think I was willing I to, was so embarrassed. to swallow at the time. It was us two and then our cousin and she didn't know and the she dance. she didn't know the dance. She just said, I'll, I'll come up there and I'll freestyle with you. <laughs> and she did. She, she stood on the other side of us and she just... I don't know what she was doing. If I'm being honest, I thought I was the only one on that stage. <laughs> I thought I was like, I thought there was a spotlight on me. Like so embarrassing. Just like, dude. and I, that, that's why I'm saying it literally parallels and it, it aligns with being a pygmy. Cause it's like, it's purely for attention. Like it's just nothing. I guess being a pygmy is deeper than that, but I just mean like, no, I guess that it's one, little kid shit. Yeah. That one we were like, I didn't even want to do it. I just remember you saying days, trust me on this. The people I was like, days, come it. on. We know it. We know it. Who remembers when Mandy and Miley did a tutorial on the YouTube at the time? I remember. I studied that thing like my life I depended know. on it. I literally was dripping sweat practicing in my living room. Just like the first time we went to a dance and we didn't know about Crank That Soldier Boy. And all our friends were doing the dance and we're like, what is that? And then we went home and literally practiced in the kitchen for two Girl. hours. My middle school and Dayson's high school, like when Dayson was in high school and I was in eighth grade, so she was like eighth and ninth. Um, I felt like her high school was getting the more recent songs. So she would like tell me like about the songs that they played at their dances so that I would be hip to the game when I got to high school. And the jerk was one of them mm -hmm. and the Dougie. And you were uh, in high school when the Dougie came out, though. But yeah, yeah, but the jerk, I had never heard that song, but you had told me about it. And I literally went again on YouTube and I learned the dance so that I could like be aware. Is it New Boys or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. They have some they have some good good songs. <laughs> okay. This next one's from Emily. She said when I was 12, there was this group called the Janoskians. I, was I remember the Janoskians. Yeah. I was truly obsessed with one of the members, Jay. I truly thought I'd somehow lose my virginity to this man. Is and that the one that dated Ariana Grande? Yeah. yeah. And she's all, but now I'm gay. It really says a lot. <laughs> he was one of the twins, which I thought the other twin was cuter. I don't remember his name. Yeah. I, didn't, they, I only knew about them because Dason would tell me about them. When they met up with O2L, I was like, this is literally my multiverse of madness. <laughs> like like the, This is my end game. Yeah. And parts of MadCon, which I didn't care about, but I was like, there's no way. Yeah, I can't relate to MadCon either. That was after my time. But even then, I feel like I wouldn't have gravitated towards them, to be honest. Um, just all white boys, yeah. I mean, I liked Nick Jonas, but like, I just mean like their their like thing, their shtick, I wasn't for me. Yeah, but I was too old at the time, anyways. But yeah, the Janoskins, I feel like. I feel like that's another group of people who really mobilized using social media because it was like really early at the time, like Twitter. Yeah. I mean, that's O2L is considered the first ever content, content house, like, which is content fair. Group, yeah, that's really fair. Um, Again, utilizing collaboration and like using each other's platforms to drive up both of your platforms. Yeah. Uh, I never really... The Janoskians were never really my thing personally, but I'm not going to lie to you. I, I think to like them, it was to be, you were a pick me. Damn. Really? Because the things they would do, it's not like O2L where like they each had a day and they're, you, you had like a bias, right? It's like kind of yeah. like One Direction where each of them are silly. They all have a character that they're playing. Right? Yeah. 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 The Janoskians was like, I think supposed to be like jackass. Yes. I remember that. And it was just gross. Yeah. And like weird. Like sometimes they do pranks that I thought were funny where they pretend they're holding a rope in the middle of the road. But they also yeah. live in Australia. And you know the men out there. Yeah. Are like rancid. Yeah. So, oh, Luke is the other turn. I thought Luke was cuter than Jay. Um, but yeah, I think it was kind of pick me stuff. Like the women that like That's them. fair. That's fair. Well, and then they use social media to get in contact with people like Ariana Grande. Yeah. Like that's the only reason they reached her. Yeah, they never really spoke to me. I think also too, like I feel like a lot of people have said they did a lot of like problematic shit back in the day. Yeah. 
I'm it's not like, sure. It's like, um, I can't remember, I can't remember if you said this about Cameron Dallas or who, but you had said, oh no, I think it was, it had to have been team 10 something. You had said, this is my impression of them. Ah, and it was you yelling. Yeah. Who was it? It was someone that I don't feel <laughs> good saying. <laughs> I'll say, and you can, I'll bleep it out. Oh, okay. I get it. It's like, it's it. what I was describing was like, <laughs> you know, like white men who just scream and then that's their whole platform. Yeah. And it's like, I don't get why people like that, but like, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean, you're not my cup of tea personally, mm-hmm. but like go off, I guess. No, but, I, I agree. But most of the men who make content like that Are suck. Gross. Like they suck ass and it's only men who do that shit. So, you know, that's why I'm like, I kind of stand by that statement, but I feel that you, I get what you're saying. You're saying that's what the Janoskians were essentially. Yeah. yeah. And I thought it was funny. Like, so yeah, it's cause they're like crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh man, you can't take them crazy. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like they're so, they, they just don't care. Literally. There's like this quote in a, in the office. Like there's this episode where they go to Gettysburg and like, uh, he wants to try to like inspire them on the way there. But Daryl's like, Hey, let me see if I can stream my iPad to the TV. I have I have Limitless on their own DVD. And then uh, Phyllis goes, I've heard of that movie. Is that the one where the man becomes Limitless? <laughs> and then he goes, yeah. Is that the Bradley Cooper movie? Yeah. Where he takes that pill? Yeah. I just thought of that right now. Okay, this next one's from Kara. She said, Taylor Swift's Speak Now tour was my very first concert. Ooh, I was fun. so obsessed with her that I convinced my dad to take my 11 year old ass to get a literal perm in my hair so I could have Taylor hair. Oh and my God. she would then see me in the crowd matching with her and then want to take me under her wing. <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I was convinced this would work and wasn't even deterred by the fact that we were in the nosebleeds. At the end of the night, I was shocked that nothing happened because of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Did your hair get killed after that perm? I mean, Is when I was still in, alive, at least you were 11. I was like 14. I told my mom, I want the, the Demi bangs that Demi had in Camp Rock. Yeah, but like she got her hair done because she was hoping that she would see her. No, I know. And mine was I wanted to look like Demi Lovato. I don't remember. Was Speak Now the. Oh, that's the album with the purple dress. <laughs> yes. Yes. Great album. Enchanted. Uh, Dear better John. than better than revenge is on there. Dear John, better than revenge. Back I love to that December. Song. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good album. One. Shout out Taylor Warner. That one she hasn't uh, redone. You know she skipped that one to go, yeah. with, and so people have theories on it. Mm, interesting. I love that album. Um, I get random whenever I do Q and A's. I always get at least four times. Do you like Taylor Swift? Um, I don't know why you guys are dying to know if I like her. I do. I fuck heavy with Taylor Swift. I think. I know. After seeing everyone's videos of going to the Eras tour, I really want to go. But then I asked Michelle because she saw the weekend. We'll see where the wind takes me. I know. She saw the weekend in the arena that Taylor's supposed to play in LA. Mm -hmm. And she said he looks so small and I had VIP tickets like on the ground. I know. It's just like I can't even the imagine. arena. Because I thought just, the One Direction one was as big. And I don't think it was as big as so it was. Seen. They they did they filled up Qualcomm. That's crazy. You think so? That's like fifty thousand plus. Like that's an that's an insane number. Like no, I'm not saying it's seats. small. I was saying no, no, I think no. no I'm saying Sofi's qual- bigger. Let me. Look I mean, up it, how many? I mean, it might be, but I'm saying it's around. It's in the same range. Is my point? They were selling out stadiums too. But okay, it's so Sofi is fifty is seventy thousand. Yeah. And then Qualcomm. Oh, it has more. Told you. And they sold that bitch out. That's yeah. crazy. So like, that's why I said 50,000 plus. That's mm-hmm. a fuck ton of seats. So no matter where you're at, unless you're up against the barricade, they're going to look like this. Little ants. But it's the fact that she's a single person is crazy. She like, performs for three hours. I know. Good on you, bitch. I and know. I've seen lots of the effects and shit. Like she went all mm-hmm. out, like, which I fucking love. I think Taylor Swift is one of the most talented songwriters. Like that bitch can write a song, bitch. Like her, the way that she like, it's almost like people are going to get so mad at me for saying this, but it's like Ed Sheeran. People hate. Well, that's actually not true. I saw a chicken shop day clip that it's old. Cause he, he was on there. That a while episode ago. was so funny. It was yeah. last year. Yeah. And everyone was like, why am I like attracted to him? And everyone's like, oh, like, I kind of fuck with him after this. Because all you do is look at pictures of him. Well, <laughs> that are like, 
Well, oh, and some of them, pudding. they're like, some of them are edited like to make he, him look even crazier. Yeah. But like, he's a very normal looking person to me. You guys didn't have a plus, a plus area. That's why. That's what I'm saying. I'm just, here's my point. I've been on boots on the ground. I've been a number one day one fan. It's true. But the way he writes a fucking song, like the, the metaphors and shit that he uses are crazy. Just like hers. Like mm-hmm. the way that people are like, and the shit she they, says, like they had a bit of a romance. The two of them. That is they? true. Maybe they bonded over being some of the most talented songwriters in the yeah, fucking like, world. We can't be together. It would be too powerful. <laughs> Well, and he's, he talks about her a lot. She talks about him a lot. Like he's like, she's like genuinely one of the most talented people I've ever worked with, Yeah, which is true. She's a, she's probably a, a musical genius like he is. Mm-hmm. So anywho, I am a big fan of Taylor Swift. I think she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Me too. Jason is too. So we are both part of the Swift. E- I almost said clan and that just sounded wrong. Um, crew. Crew. Would you say club? Muna just opened for taylor swift i love muna we love muna that's why i just wish that that they were opening even phoebe bridger's opening i wish those people were paramore i wish they were opening in la yeah dude i saw um jojo's post oh the girl that said like we don't know who these people are but they're so hot joe makes me laugh so i love that band so much they're so funny, so funny. did you see katie she posted pictures of the concert like no of her I performing. See Katie's. and she said she walked up to the barista at the airport with her era's water bottle like she's like oh can you feel it she goes oh, did you go last night she goes yeah she goes was it amazing and she was like yeah it was because obviously katie performed <laughs> yeah and she went in the game room and then she went okay but i can't fill up your water bottle you can have a water cup <laughs> But I love Muna so much. So good. Such a good performer. And we've seen Muna in concert and they are fantastic. I know. Hopefully we'll see them again soon. I know. They're so good live. <laughs> like crazy good live. Yeah. Phoebe, um, like that's why I'm like, I want to see those guys. I don't know who's doing. I think Gracie Abrams might be opening for Taylor Swift. I can't remember. I love Gracie Abrams. Yeah. Dude, you know, you know who. Um, and Biba Doobie. I would love to see her too. I love her. Is that a made up name that you just <laughs> Like, that's not real. Like, <laughs> be, be, that's not real. Beba Doobie is a real artist. <laughs> I just know when I said that, her, her brain like restarted. My brain took a fucking screenshot when she did that. When she said that, I was like, you've never heard of Beba Doobie? What do you think? <laughs> she sings the glue song that was on TikTok a lot. I've never found someone of me like you. And that's how you pronounce it? Yeah, Beba Doobie. It's supposed to be silly. It's right supposed it? to be like, Beba do wop do wop. That'd be funny. <laughs> oh my God. Like scat. Don't piss me off. Don't yell like that <laughs> like in the microphone. Scatting. Did you see someone reposted that clip of you yelling like a bird and it made me mad? What the fuck? No. I put it on two idiot girl. Don't tag me in it. <laughs> it fucking piss me off. Don't yell like that ever again. I wonder what the origin of that name is. Well, her name's like B. That's what she goes by B-E-A. And so I don't I think she's she's British. Okay. But I think she's Vietnamese. So I don't know if she has cool. a, a Vietnamese name or whatever. But Okay. Cool. Yeah, she has like I think like over a million, maybe two million Instagram followers. So no, I believe you that that she that she's an artist. I'm just like here. I'm gonna play the glue song for you. And Biba Doobie. <laughs> that's how she said it. And I would love to see Biba Doobie. And I was like, that's not that's not a real name that you just said to me. <laughs> Look, at, that's literally <laughs> Biba Doobie. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's spelled phonetically how it sounds is crazy. And then what's it called? We saw her at GovBall, but you were working. So I was standing with her watching her for a little bit on the you main You were stage. watching Biba Doobie? Yeah. And I said, I'm so excited to see Biba Doobie. I've never seen her before. And when the fuck did you say that to me? Day one. I'm telling you right now, I would have remembered if you said that name to me. I, it was really loud. So I don't Maybe you, you told somebody else. It was really loud. So I don't think you can hear me. I would have remembered you saying, just like I'll never forget when you said it just now, I would have remembered it then. <laughs> Literally her name. I believe you. It's just like the way you said, and Biba Doobie. I was like, what the fuck are you saying? I don't sound like that. I bet you Billy listens to Bebe Doobie. I mean, I've probably listened to her too. I'm just Here, saying. Here, I'm going like, to play the glue song, right? Yeah. Hold on. We have to cut this part out, Sagar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Okay, she knows the coffee song, you guys. Yeah. It's like, I drink it like a coffee every day. Yeah. That one, yeah. And they, they've they sped it up a bunch. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I haven't heard the song, but um, when people say it was on TikTok or it blew up on TikTok, I feel like I have heard it, but it's just been remixed a bunch of different mm-hmm. ways. So maybe the version of it I heard was not the original version of it. Yeah. Anyways, sorry about that. <laughs> it's a quick little intermission about Biba Doobie. <laughs> She's very talented. Her music's really good. I love music like that too. It's it's very um it's like uh Lizzie McAlpine's yeah. vibes. And Gracie Abrams, yeah. Yeah, Gracie Abrams, who I love also. So Okay, we're gonna end on this one. Cool. And also I don't sound like that. Just like the the teeth lick, I didn't do that. So And I would also love to see Biba Doobie. <laughs> I don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I it's not the name. It well, the name too, but it's the way she says it that makes me like. That makes me want to like, turn her chair backwards and make her face the corner. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's not how I said That's it. That's I said. Is that a playoff? Be but do wop. You know what I mean? Do you think? I don't know. Let's ask her. Okay. I think it's a great name. It's a, it's a real showstopper. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> that that really caught my attention immediately. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> this last one's from Kylie. We're going to end on this one, guys. And she put, as someone who was a fangirl during the height of Tumblr, I've done so many cringy things, but one of the <laughs> ones that haunt me, that haunts me is from 2012. It was Liam Payne's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and this girl was putting together a video compilation of fans saying happy birthday. I had my cousin record me saying happy birthday, daddy direction around 50 times to make sure it was just right. And then sent it out to a random email. I never heard back from the girl or saw the compilation video. And I've been looking over my shoulder for the last 10 years. <laughs> just waiting for this video of me saying happy birthday daddy directions to surface and ruin my life. I bet if you were to grow a platform, if you have one already, or if you wanted to ever become an influencer, I bet yeah. you would resurface. I'm so glad our mom made us so afraid of people on the internet that we didn't do stuff. God, you and me both. I, I wish... I, I, or not wish I'm grateful yeah. that when I grew up was just before the development of camera phones or the access to them mm-hmm. because it would have been a mess. It would have been a true dumpster fire if I had access to camera phones. I can't even imagine in that stage. Yeah. Have we talked about the radio show? I don't think we have. No. Do you want to end on that story? <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to be vulnerable with you guys for a second. Hold space for me. Okay. So. And then you just say, when I die, <laughs> I want to come back. I as a country boy. I sound, every time I do it, I sound better. Oh, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways. Um, I'm going to say when I come, I'm going to, when I die, I want to come back a country boy and uh, make sure I crack up. <laughs> Make sure I get everyone looking forward to cracking up. (laughs) Um, Anyways, uh, like I said, we didn't have access to like camera phones the way that um, some of you people who are younger than us did. But um, we did get creative when we wanted to to create art. That's what I'd like to look at it as. Mm. Um, My mom when she was going to college, like when she was pursuing her degree, she used to take um, recorders there, like uh, voice recorders, which are like literal tapes, like inside you close it and then you record and she would record lectures. And I remember when we were like fucking around one day, we found one and we asked her if we could have it. And she said, yeah. And then um, I don't know what made us do this. Like, I don't know what, what drove us to do this. But we literally would record our voices. Like we started like messing around with it and recording it. And we could like, when we found out you could like hear us talk back. We were like, oh my God, that's crazy. So then we started recording uh, radio shows and we, we would host radio shows and we would be, I would be the host of the radio show. And Dason, I think one of our friends would be like one of my co-hosts. And then Dason was always the guest, (laughs) but like the bit, I don't know what, again, like, I don't know why we did this, but like the bit was that she would come and then she would be totally normal. (laughs) And like, I would ask her questions and then she would get to a point where she couldn't take it anymore. And then she would go crazy (laughs) and try to kill her. And then she would try to beat up our friend. 
And like, she wasn't actually doing it. Like we were literally just recording it as if it was happening. And we would play it back and we would crack laugh up. We would crack up. Talk about looking forward to cracking up. That was us waiting for the, the recording to be done so we could play it back and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to cracking Which up. Which essentially is this podcast. So <laughs> like what it turned into. But we literally, every time, like I, she would pretend to be a celebrity. Like literally she'd be, I'd be like, welcome to the show, Angelina Jolie. Mm-hmm. And she would come on and then she'd be like, hello. And I'd be like, so what's your favorite color? And she'd be like, purple. I'm going to kill you. And then she would just like start attacking her <laughs> There would be no transition. No, like there would be no build up. No, there was no provocation like whatsoever. <laughs> like she would just like answer so normally. And then she'd be like, ah. And then she'd start pretending to beat up our friend. And then our friend would be like, ah, help me. And I'd be like, all right, well, that's the end of our show. And then I would just cut it off. (laughs) And then we would literally rewind the tape and we would play it again. Like, why? And it was. (laughs) Why? I was going to say the name of it, but I'm too embarrassed. I just remember that. There was like a seal or something in it. Yeah, it was you know what w- the name is. Wait, it was W E W B W B Seals Five O'clock News. That's what it was called. <laughs> and we would sing the jingle <laughs> in the beginning, and then we would make seal noises. We're like, all right, we're back. We like we were playing all the characters. <laughs> like we like, were like the the theme song. We were the producer. We were the interviewer. Yeah. We were the guest. The, the really, victim. Like, just like It was really funny. And like, I don't know, like, I don't get why that was like our bit, but like, we didn't plan it at all. We just started recording and then that's what we did. It's called improv. Look it up. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Comedy. You know what I mean? It's called improvisation. Yeah. And that's the starting story, the founding story of the Groundlings. <laughs> and those three girls, they guess what they founded? <laughs> <laughs> the groundlings. <laughs> so that was me being vulnerable with you guys. You can't be mean to me about it. I asked you. We all space. did weird shit when we were. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty fucking weird. But my point being, I'm glad I didn't have an iPhone. Oh my god! At yeah, the time, we filmed it. Yeah, we definitely, and I would have posted it. <laughs> I would have, with the full confidence, it would go viral. Yeah, and people would ask me for more skits. Mm-hmm. So be like, I gotta give the people what they want. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yes. Uh, if you liked it, you can listen to all of our podcast episodes every week can stream podcasts, and you can always watch the video version on our YouTube channel. Uh, we will be posting a poll this week, but I'll probably post like a Q&A type thingy where I have you guys tell us what you want us to talk about. Yeah. That way we can be inspired by the youths. That's all of you. You tell me. You tell us. You tell me what's going to really help, help you, you look, look forward, forward to, to cracking, cracking up. up. I need that info now. <laughs> really looking forward to cracking I just up. haven't really cracked up in a while <laughs> <laughs> on his way to see osmosis <laughs> me. Other than that, we literally hope, me literally me um we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time bye bye